Thank you so much for watching this preview for the next AI Weekly Update on Henry AI Labs. This preview video is intended to help you get a quick sense of what's new in AI this week before uh, the deeper dive video that's published on Mondays. So I hope uh, going through this content quickly can help you maybe find a weekend reading list and get a quick preview of the exciting news in deep learning. There has been a really exciting new way to compress data with deep neural networks. Uh, there's a new technique for doing uh, curiosity, exploration, and reinforcement learning using self-supervised learning and contrastive learning. Uh, there's a new framework for self-supervised learning, Barlow Twins. Uh, it looks like an extension on the Bootstrap Your Own Latent framework. Uh, there's also a new open source library from uh, PyTorch, Facebook, uh, Vissel, a library for state-of-the-art self-supervised learning with some examples. Uh, we also have from the Hugging Face team uh, a group of paper summaries in efficient transformer design and reducing the cost of pre-training, things like the Longformer, Compressive Transformer, and Linformer and Performer. Uh, we also have pre-trained transformers as universal computation engines. So pre-training a transformer and then seeing if it can uh, perform these other kind of tasks and also image classification tasks like CIFAR-10 and MNIST using a uh, transformer trained with language modeling. Uh, we'll also look at attention is not all you need, uh, deconstructing the overall transformer block, the use of skip connections, multi-layer perceptrons, maybe the layer normalization layer as well, kind of taking apart all of these components that make up the uh, transformer block and not just the self-attention layer. Then we'll look at a new lens on understanding generalization and deep learning, a new technique for uh, doing data splitting to test this that I think is pretty interesting. Uh, we also have a survey paper on domain generalization. Uh, then we have check scene, unseen disease detection for deep learning interpretation of chest x-rays. Uh, how well can we generalize to new diseases, kind of like a few shot learning problem but with diseases, which I think is an interesting way of looking at this problem. Uh, Waymo has extended their data set and we'll go through exactly what this means. Uh, deep generative modeling, a survey on all these different things like variational autoencoders, generative adversarial networks, normalizing flows, and then energy-based and autoregressive models. Should be an interesting uh, summarization of all these different uh, exciting models. Uh, involution, a new convolution design, looks similar to say like the separable convolution or the depth-wise separable convolution. Some new efficiency design that's uh, leading to improvements on the ResNet 50. Uh, then we also have uh, the survey Haystack, the state of search in 2021. Uh, it has a, a description of these different things that are being used to improve search with deep neural networks that I think is interesting. Uh, then hurdles to progress in long form question answering, discussion of some quick things that are uh, wrong with the current state of question answering. Uh, reinforcement learning bit by bit, uh, particularly discussing uh, this problem of how to seek information. So uh, what information to retain and kind of interesting this idea of like uh, maybe like exploitation, exploration seems it's a long paper about 74 pages, but it seems like uh, there's a new framework for thinking about uh, seeking information in the exploration sense. Then a really exciting new tutorial, JAX 101. So JAX is this cutting edge uh, library, you know, in this timeline of TensorFlow to PyTorch and now to JAX. And it seems like this tutorial might be it's kind of like widespread adoption moment. So I'm excited to get into exactly uh, how this tutorial is structured. Uh, then surprisingly simple self-supervision for offline reinforcement learning. Offline reinforcement learning, you're learning from previously collected uh, uh, sequence data, you know, like reinforcement learning, state, action, reward, those kind of uh, pairs. And this is going to be using some kind of self-supervised learning to facilitate the representation learning in that framework. And then also from Google, uh, paired a new multi-agent approach for adversarial environment generation, multi-agent reinforcement learning, a pretty interesting idea, but not too many uh, common benchmarks. So maybe this will take off as one of them. And then finally, we'll look at uh, knowledge evolution in neural networks. First up is this new data compression algorithm with deep neural networks. And I think this is a really interesting approach to compressing data with deep neural networks. So usually how I've thought about this kind of uh, paradigm of research is that you take an auto, you basically overfit an autoencoder. So an autoencoder would take in the high dimensional image, compress it into these Z vectors, and then you would store the Z vectors as the compressed data and then render the full image by using the decoder half of the autoencoder. But this approach is different from that. Instead of fitting an autoencoder, an overfitted autoencoder and storing the latent vectors, what you do here is you learn a mapping from each XY coordinate in each image in the data set with a multi-layer perceptron into the RGB values at that spatial location. So each image, the new compressed representation of it, is the parameters of this multi-layer perceptron. So 
these parameters are the compressed representation for this image. And then you fill in these parameters and then you can slide it left to right, you know, top down, and then decode it with the RGB value. So this is a really interesting approach to this and I've never seen this uh, kind of strategy applied before. And so I'm really excited to get into the details of this and maybe learn a little more about how uh, data compression is used in deep neural network training. It seems like if you can compress the data like this and you integrate this in say these deep learning training platforms like Determined AI, you can uh, you know, have faster hyperparameter iterations because you don't need to load the entire data set. You can just load the compressed representations. Similarly to these uh, pre-processing pipelines where you have the CPU, GPU optimizations, and then you have the prefetching and the batching and all that kind of stuff. Maybe you can have some kind of system of decoding these compressed representations and uh, making this more efficient memory-wise. We have an interesting title for this next one, Behavior from the Void, Unsupervised Active Pre-Training. So it seems like this is uh, pretty similar to these diversity search, uh, novelty search papers. Like if you've read the paper from uh, Kenneth Stanley, Jeff Kloon in that lab, they have some really exciting papers on this. This idea of uh, curiosity should be about trying to seek out a novel state. So the reinforcement learning agent is trying to find a state that it's never experienced before. But then obviously as you have these high dimensional inputs like uh, the DeepMind control suite or any kind of vision based system like a vision based robotic system these high dimensional states are tough to say this is a new state so if you look at uh, say the go explore paper where it plays atari games the way go explore says that this is a new state is by dramatically compressing the spatial resolution of the image frames so say you only have uh, like 16 by 16 and you know then you have 256 different uh, state configurations or something like that but what this is doing is it's using the self-supervised representations to uh, signal that this is a novel state so you have this new contrastive loss a projection of the representation of this current state a k nearest neighbors uh, kind of lookup and then this idea of this particle based entropy reward so this should be an interesting approach to seeing the latest extension on uh, curiosity driven exploration and this idea of exploring new states for training reinforced learnings uh, agents to explore their environment the next paper is titled Barlow Twins, Self-Supervised Learning via Redundancy Reduction. So there's been an interesting framework out there from DeepMind titled uh, BYOL Bootstrap Your Own Latent that has this similar architecture of having copies of the same network. This network is usually a momentum encoded average of the other one, but in this paper they're going to uh, do away without that. And then, um, and then they learn representations and you try to maximize the similarity of this representation. And it's really interesting why the Bootstrap Your Own Latent uh, paper doesn't converge to constant representations for all of the uh, inputs because there's no normalization that wouldn't say, you know, deter it from mapping every input to the same constant value and then you maximize the similarity. So this, is, this paper, Barlow Twins, is introducing a new cross-correlation matrix between these uh, embeddings to try to uh, you know, have this be equal to the identity matrix. And this is how you're gonna try to regularize this and avoid this representation collapse. So they describe how they're able to do this without uh, predictor networks, gradient stopping, or moving average on the weight updates, which I thought was kind of funny because it's not like these things are you know, pretty, they're not very difficult to implement any of these things, whereas this is a little more difficult to implement. But anyway, so it does seem like an interesting idea and I'm excited to get into the details of you know, how this kind of modification improves self-supervised learning. Next up, Facebook AI has published an open source library for reproducing self-supervised learning algorithms like MoCo and SimCLR and so on. So there's already been an open source effort on this. It's called something like uh, Lightly AI, and this is the latest effort in that. So we have, you can uh, go get started and see how to install it. Uh, tutorials are great, and you can see you have these collab notebooks, train SimCLR on one GPU. So this could be you know, a weekend project for someone interested. You see that uh, you know you can use this library of these configuration files and so on. These tutorials will walk you how to do it. Large scale training, a lot of interesting ideas of trying to make these experiments in large scale self-supervised learning frameworks like SimCLR more reproducible and uh, usable for people who are interested in applying this for their own data sets. Next up is pre-trained transformers as universal computation engines. This reminds me of a paper I read recently titled uh, Transformers Trained on Non-Human Languages where they say train transformers on JavaScript code and then fine tune that transformer on the glue benchmark and you know those kinds of ideas. So in this idea what they're doing is they're gonna be using this pre-trained transformer like a GPT-2 and then trying to just fine tune that model for image classification, say breaking up the uh, images into patches similar to the vision transformer kind of style of architecture as well as some of these other kind of uh, challenges of uh, tasks. So I thought it was interesting to, one of the authors has published a Twitter thread that kind of takes away some of the key findings. So I think it might be more fun to go through this for the preview rather than the paper itself. So right off the bat, we find minimal fine tuning, 0.1% of the parameters performs as well as training from scratch in a completely new modality. So that's pretty interesting, this idea that, you know, you can 
take a transformer train on language and then fine and then freeze a lot of the parameters. So you see how only 0.1% um, of the parameters are being fine tuned. So that's an interesting result because it's uh, probably a lot easier to fine tune a smaller amount of the parameters with respect to fine tuning this on some new task. And that's interesting because imagine taking GPT-2 and that's just the universal architecture for any kind of problem, whether it's audio data or you know, like physiological time series data. That's kind of the promise of this paper that you could take a pre-trained BERT, GPT, anything like that, these language models, and then you don't have to have a 175 billion parameters. You can only fine tune a small subset of them and adapt it to the new problem. So this is describing further this idea that uh, they're freezing the layers, you know, communicating this idea that you don't have to fine tune the entire transformer to the new problem, visualizing the attention layers, uh, reporting some results on the speed up of the time with the compute benefits of doing this kind of uh, fine tuning. Then um, comparing transformer with LSTM, uh, looking at the different tasks, bit memory, XOR, list ops, and then MNIST CIFAR 10. I'm not sure what that stands for, and then another test. So along with the really exciting news that Hugging Face has done a $40 million uh, Series B round, they've also published a new uh, reading list with their uh, science team and their you know monthly summaries of these papers. So uh, last month they talked about how they discussed about these um, how to reduce inference time with things like conditional computation, quantization, distillation, and pruning, compressing these models, making them more efficient for inference. And next they're looking up at how to reduce the cost of pre-training. So they're going deep dive into the long former, compressive transformer, linformer, performer, these different you know, ways of trying to uh, avoid this quadratic complexity, maybe attend over longer input sequences than 512 or 1024 tokens. So this blog post has uh, summaries of each of these papers. And then at the end, uh, some discussion from the Hugging Face Science team about these papers. So really excited to read this and see what kind of insights and how, how well this clarifies some of these ideas. Next up, we have a decomposition of the different components of the transformer block in addition to attention titled, Attention is not all you need. Pure attention loses rank doubly exponentially with depth. So I'm not sure exactly what's meant by rank collapse and um, path decomposition of this idea, but I'm excited to read this paper and maybe try to learn a little more about it. So it's interesting to think of you know, how these blocks are designed. The transformer block has this particular architecture of having the skip connection, these multi-layer perceptron uh, feature passes from layer to layer. So I think it's going to be an interesting read to see how this, uh, how they kind of are deconstructing how these inner, uh, these components interact with each other. One of the most important concepts of machine learning is understanding generalization. Generalization describes this idea that we train these models on some train set and then we evaluate them on a test set. This test set could have some kind of distribution shift from the train set. This distribution shift could happen in all sorts of ways, which will also look at uh, the latest release of the Wild V1.1 data set as they are building this data set to particularly um, describe these distribution shifts that happen in the real world test sets. But this phenomenon of understanding generalization, train your model on train set, and now you're deploying it on a test set. So th this uh, Google blog post is walking through the uh, the fundamental idea in this paper, the deep bootstrap framework, good online learners are good offline generalizers. So the idea of good online learners, good offline generalizers is referring to this idea of uh, in a real world uh, test set, you might assume this idea of infinite data where it gets a new batch of data and just has this never ending stream of new data to learn from compared to uh, what we usually do, which is loop through the same data set several times during training. So they are going to uncover some way of using this kind of uh, data formatting to uh, describe the generalization ability compared to this kind of strategy of training models and then evaluating them. So while on the topic of generalization, next up is a survey paper on domain generalization. So particularly with domain generalization, they're referring to in transfer learning, you have source and target domain. So you might describe uh, training this model on Wikipedia data as your source domain and then transferring it to say uh, legal documents that have been annotated as your target domain. So you're looking at kind of the data domains in this broad sense of say biomedical papers then transferred to IMDB movie review sentiment. So that kind of idea of these uh, data domains in this domain shift and this kind of uh, way of looking at source and target transfer learning. So I'm excited to see what the ideas are in this paper. I haven't read much of it yet, but I think it's a really interesting uh, idea, this concept of looking at the data source itself for thinking about transfer learning and out of distribution generalization. Some more really exciting news this week is a new tutorial on the JAX framework for deep learning, JAX 101. So JAX is supposed to be, you know, maybe a closer integration with NumPy and things. I've seen things like uh, implementations of, say, the optimal transport algorithm or maybe the Wasserstein loss for things like Wasserstein GAN and so on. So this seems to be the next generation of deep learning frameworks, and it seems to be uh, having its widespread adoption moment. So 
I personally don't know anything about Jack, so this is going to be kind of my first introduction to this. So maybe this um, weekly update will be just my summary of someone who knows absolutely nothing about Jax and give you a sense of whether this tutorial can get you up to speed and, and make it something that you actually want to use for your research. Next up, we have a really exciting technical deep dive into deep generative modeling, a comparative review of variational autoencoders, generative adversarial networks, normalizing flows, energy-based, and autoregressive models. So I'm really excited to try to see and learn more about these kind of architectures, starting off with energy-based models, Boltzmann machines, deep belief networks, then to the variational autoencoders and the GANs and all these things and unifying them and thinking about this idea of deep generative modeling, which is one of the most exciting topics in deep learning. So next up is another look at medical image analysis with deep learning. And this paper titled Check Scene, Unseen Disease Detection for Deep Learning Interpretation of Chest X-rays. So we're seeing that uh, some of these uh, chest radiographs of lung images have disease labels that haven't been seen during training. So now they're generalizing to these new disease labels. So it kind of reminds me of the few shot learning setting in a way. I'm not sure if it's exactly similar to say Omniglot, but that kind of idea of generalizing to new classes that weren't seen during training. So let's go through this Twitter thread from one of the authors of the paper describing the uh, key ideas in the paper. So the context, data sets used to train models typically only provide labels for a limited number of common diseases. And this was, uh, there was another paper uh, last week, I forget the title of it, something like Visual Check Spurt, that is showing that there is a disagreement in the labels that are used when you're fitting these, say, one hot encoded labels on chest radiographs compared to the clinical reports, at the radiology reports with respect to the image. So there's this misalignment in the labeling and, you know, it could be that there, that these data sets thinking about labeling them needs to be uh, thought about more. So it is unknown whether deep learning models can maintain performance in the presence of diseases not seen during training or whether they can detect the presence of such diseases. So I think this is a really interesting idea too with this kind of like cell classification, all this deep learning for uh, biology at the vision level and thinking about generalizing to these new uh, vision inputs of say cell images that you know humans just don't really know too much about and, and also wouldn't have the time to densely annotate. So question one. Can we detect diseases not seen during training? We first design a controlled experiment to evaluate whether deep learning models trained on a subset of diseases, seen diseases, can detect the presence of any one or a larger set of diseases. So it sounds kind of like out of distribution detection, say like um, with contrastive learning where you train it on the Omniglot sets and then you have a new one and you see if this is, um, if you can tell that this is out of distribution or something like that. So we find that the models tend to falsely classify unseen diseases as no disease. You know, it sounds reasonable for it to do that because it hasn't seen it and it probably previously has some kind of uh, healthy lung label or something like that. We also show that deep learning models may succeed in identifying no disease versus any disease when an unseen disease co-occurs with a seen disease, but not when an unseen disease appears alone. So some other questions are presented in the study, and I'm definitely excited to learn more about this area of research. Here's an interesting new paper that came out this week titled Knowledge Evolution in Neural Networks. So the title may not uh, tell the story that this is tackling this, the problem of learning from limited labeled data sets. And this is a unique approach to learning from limited labeled data sets. Usually we see ideas like transfer learning, data augmentation, uh, regularization, the parameters, and so on. This is particularly studying these two kind of regularization ideas uh, that motivates some intuition of the dropout layers and the residual network. So trying to take apart and understand how a dropout works and how these skip connections work to try to get a better sense of uh, how knowledge evolves in these deep neural networks and how the features progress throughout training and overall targeting the application of learning with less labeled data. Next up, we have a really exciting new open data set, expanding the Waymo open data set with interactive scenario data and new challenges. So it's not enough for a self-driving car to just be able to put a bounding box and a stop sign or label all the pixels of the road and pedestrians and so on. You also need to be able to anticipate what's going to happen with these other cars on the road, what kind of decisions they're going to make and predicting the forward motion of them to plan out your own driving decisions. So this should be a really exciting new data set and I'm really excited to learn more about it. Also on the topic of new data sets is CUAD, an expert annotated NLP data set for legal contract review. So reading contracts is awful and it would be really cool if we had these question answering search systems, these natural language processing models that were trained on these data sets to help uh, answer these legal questions about these different documents. So they describe, you know, the squad 2.0 data set where you have those annotations for extractive question answering and comparing it with this kind of data set. So we have 13,000 annotations of these contracts and 
uh, different things. And I'm excited to see exactly how this data is labeled and maybe some of the opportunities for uh, what kind of research projects can be achieved with this data set. So in this AI Weekly Update, I also want to look through this survey from Haystack, the state of search in 2021. So this is based on the idea that these latest advances in natural language processing should be able to build better search engines. We have things like information retrieval, question answering, summarization, all these kinds of ideas. We should have a, you know, a new generation of search engines coming soon. So this describes uh, retriever reader pipelines, uh, generators in uh, questions and then getting context for the questions, it seems. Uh, summarizers and all sorts of things. So I'm definitely really excited to uh, take apart this survey and see the different ideas for building better search engines using these latest advancements in natural language processing. So in a similar vein as a survey on the latest advances in building semantic search engines with natural language processing, this survey, uh, this paper is describing hurdles to progress in long form question answering. So I think it's mostly a collection of these issues with these uh, metrics like in um, in OpenAI's paper, Learning to Summarize with Human Feedback, they talked about how this uh, Rouge score is a bad metric of uh, summarization. And so I think it's mostly discussing these issues with metrics are preventing progress in uh, long form question answering and you know generating paragraph length answers to questions or summaries. We have a new design of the convolutional layer that makes it more efficient and achieves a 1.6% top one accuracy boost on the ResNet 50 architecture. I'm assuming on yeah, ImageNet classification, also gains on cocoa detection, segmentation, and cityscape segmentation. So I always find it really interesting when these uh, subtle redesigns of a layer can lead to significant improvements on the model, like up to 2%. Last week, we saw the transformer in transformer block that has the separate encoding on the intermediate patch embeddings for the vision transformer architecture that leads to performance improvements and I always think it's interesting how these little improvements can uh, you know really transform the performance compared to just a standard convolution so it looks like uh, this reminds me of architectures like the separable convolution the depth wise separable convolution that breaks up this computation and you know I'm not exactly sure how this works yet but here's some pseudocode and I'm excited to see what's new about this and how it is that some new design of the convolution layer has led to this improvement on the ResNet 50. Data augmentation has been really useful for reinforcing learning. We've seen things like the curl algorithm that uses this augmented contrastive learning framework where you have data augmentation to form these contrastive pairs and facilitate and representation learning. And we've also seen papers like image augmentation is all you need that just say hits the replay buffer with some data augmentation to generalize more around these uh, state to value prediction mapping. So when you have something like a Q function, you're mapping a state action pair to a predicted reward. So if you can have some data augmentation around the high dimensional state, it'll help you generalize more around these uh, state action kind of mappings in this high dimensional space. So similarly to this problem in the offline reinforcement learning setting, you're trying to learn from previously collected experience. And this paper is showing that uh, simple data augmentation leads to much uh, better mappings from state to action reward predictions they generalize better. So as if training a single reinforcement learning agent wasn't already hard enough, there are people who are already thinking about multi-agent reinforcement learning, where we have these environments where you have multiple intelligent agents and you're optimizing all of those policies either simultaneously or you just have to kind of optimize a single reinforcement learning agent with the knowledge that there are other intelligent agents in the environment. So here's a new uh, environment for testing these ideas out and I'm excited to learn more about it. Sergey Levine has been one of the most active researchers in the field of offline reinforcement learning in previous AI Weekly updates. Uh, we've looked through some of his tutorials on these deep dives into all these different offline reinforcement learning algorithms and particularly their experiments with vision-based robotic systems. And here's a new talk uh, on a non-technical introduction to offline reinforcement learning. If you're completely unfamiliar with this and uh, you know are interested in this idea of how can we train reinforcement learning agents from previously collected experience, here's a great introduction for you. We also have a really exciting new announcement from Hugging Face about their auto NLP tool. So we already in Hugging Face is already something like three lines of code to import a tokenizer, import a transformer. They even have the uh, metrics for you. And now they have all the data sets built in. But now they're also building in this hyperparameter tuning uh, library within this framework. So this should be a really exciting tool. And here's a quick preview of it uh, from Abhishek, uh, it, you know, one of the grandmasters of Kaggle then came to YouTube and made all these great tutorials. If you're not subscribed to this channel, then you're seriously missing out on really great deep learning content. And I'm really excited to learn more about this new auto NLP tool from Hugging Face. Mm -hmm.